Seaport, all the voices you want to hear. We got Wendy here, Tim Bontemps, Nick Friedel, Mr. Nets still <laughs> on the scene. For now. Yeah, we don't know where he'll be next year. A future Hall of Famer, Vince Carter, is with us, and a man whose tweet at 2.49 Eastern yesterday set off an absolute frenzy. The one and only Woj is here, and let's begin with that Woj bomb, a decision that could transform the NBA for years to come. Kevin Durant requested a trade from the Brooklyn Nets yesterday. Nets general manager Sean Marks is working with Durant and his representative Rich Kleiman on finding a trade partner. And if this is the end of KD and Kyrie, it is quite fair to say it didn't go according to plan. Including the playoffs, the two played a total of 58 games together across three seasons out of 247 scheduled games. And most importantly, of course, they won just a single playoff series together as Adrian Wojnarowski joins us. And uh, Woj, this certainly could be a transformational trade for any team. So what is the latest on the trade talks as of this morning? Well, Hannah, obviously start with Kevin Durant and just the volume and uh, ferocity might be the word of calls uh, landing in Brooklyn yesterday once uh, the news was reported. Uh, significant. I had teams tell me that they called Brooklyn more than once and up their offers without even a, a counter. That's that's pretty unusual, but I think certainly teams understand uh, how rare this is to have a player of Kevin Durant's stature uh, on the trade market. And listen, I think there's no shortage of big markets, small markets. There are teams who normally wouldn't be able to even consider being able to get Kevin Durant in free agency who now have an ability uh, to trade for him with four years left on his contract. So, uh, listen, I think there's a lot of different kinds of deals for the Nets to evaluate. You're going to have, uh, you know, everyone's going to give you, uh, you know, three, four picks moving forward, certainly young players, but there are also teams, veteran all-star players, young all-star players. So this is a uni such a unique situation. I think it's going to take a few days at least to flesh out uh, as teams, um, uh, you know, jockey to try to see uh, not just in one-on-one -on -one talks with Brooklyn, but in multi-team deals where a team may not have the particular player that fits for Brooklyn, but they could go get it uh, in a two or, a, or excuse me, a three or four-team trade. Uh, this just opens up. I think the imagination of front offices is really being tested here uh, because. I think you know there are so many teams who are interested in trying to acquire Kevin Durant. How do you separate your team and your package from all the others? 18 months ago, Woj, the big three were together. So Kyrie, KD, Harden, they were title favorites. What happened? <laughs> uh, that's a long answer, Hannah. And, and obviously, <laughs> I think what happened here in the last few months, the combination of uh, the acrimonious talks with Kyrie Irving and the Nets about his future, their unwillingness to commit long-term to him, his inability to find a long-term deal and a sign-and-trade in the marketplace, and, and the Warriors winning a championship it played a factor in this. I think it, it exasperated Kevin Durant's frustration. I think, um, I think that's the narrative uh, that surrounded him that he dealt with uh, in the aftermath of him leaving. Golden State and then going on to win a title without him contrasted with what has gone on in Brooklyn uh, in these last three years and how uh, you know James Harden comes James Harden goes I mean remember James Harden was traded they traded for him because I thought he was a kind of the um, you know he gave them an ability to be able to keep uh, Kevin Durant long term uh, because they didn't know that they could count on Kyrie Irving and he came and left in the interim. And in the end, um, I think for Kevin Durant, you know, essentially I'm told I think what he described to ownership yesterday when he asked for the trade was that he needed a change of scenery. And so he's headed Ooh. for that. I think certainly Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving is, have both very likely, almost assuredly, played their last games in Brooklyn. Yeah, ironically, that four-year extension actually kicks in today uh, for Kevin Durant. Woj, thank you so much uh, Thanks, for Anna. all your great reporting. We'll talk to you in a bit. Uh, meanwhile, so much insight here in the studio. Oh, we've got Tim and Nick and Wendy and Vince Carter joining us on Get Up. And Wendy, 
I told you so. You can very, very <laughs> assuredly say that to the rest of us because you were saying if the Nets didn't lock up Kyrie long term that they ran a real risk of losing KD. So you heard Woj also bring the Warriors into this mix and their success. Uh, how do you see it? Uh, they lost the billionaire. And that's Joe Tsai, the owner. Um, he lost his uh, belief that this could work. And the, he attempted, through Sean Marks, his general manager, to renegotiate not just the contract of Kyrie Irving, but the sort of contract of the way they were going to interact with each other. Uh, and I think the last straw to me was when Kyrie said, see you in the fall. Because that was sort of a declaration of, all right, you, you, well, I'm going to give you one more year, you're going to get one more year. And I think they were just like, we are not willing to do this anymore. And I think Durant saw the writing on the wall, too. And they realized that there was no way this could stay together. And they, you know, they could have capitulated, Hannah. They could have just renegotiated and given Kyrie what they wanted. But that's what they've done for the last three years. And, they, and I think Joe Tsai, with Sean Mark's support, put their foot down. They knew it could come to this. And I actually think, based on what I'm feeling, there's an immense sense of relief across that river in Brooklyn. Even though they are breaking apart, potentially, what we thought would be a title team, I think, and this is happy, there's going to be a sense of euphoria, at least short term, that that's is gone. Okay, that would be the opposite end of the spectrum from what we heard of you. You said that you have never seen a team this miserable. Oh, Hannah. <laughs> they were so I mean, you, you were with them. You were with them every day. It was right. What was so, the, what was the scenario? So bad at the end. Let me take you back to the locker room in Chicago, middle of January. They just beat the Bulls, who were tops in the East. James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, they're beaming. They're looking at each other like, yep, this is it. This is what we signed up for. Harden sits at the podium and goes, I'm going to give Kyrie that shot myself. Less than a month later, Harden's gone. And a few days after this game in Chicago, and this is key, Kevin got hurt. He injured his knee. That changed the dynamic moving forward into the trade deadline. But Hannah, Harden realized that Kevin or Kyrie wasn't going to change his stance. He was not going to get that shot no matter what happened. He's not committing to the Nets. He's gone. And I cannot stress to you enough just how much Kyrie's choice not to get that shot changed everything for this team all year and was the albatross that hung over that locker room day in, day out, and from top to bottom, ownership, coaches, GM, everybody was looking every day going, what is he going to say next? And we just cannot count on this guy. To Brian's point before, the Nets for three years did everything Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant wanted, and that includes... The one time they didn't, back in October, when they said you either got to be all in or all out, right? You either got to get the shot and be with us for every game or you're not going to play with us at all. Then that was the beginning of the acrimony with Kyrie Irving. Then two months later, when Kevin Durant wanted Kyrie back around, all of a sudden Kyrie's back. And then that's the beginning, as you said, of James Harden's departure, right? Those two moments to me sum up everything that gets us to this point where we are right now. I want to go back to something Woj mentioned the Warriors and looking at the Warriors, not just that Kevin Durant was trying to get out of the Warriors shadow and come to Brooklyn and win a championship, but what happened with the Warriors and Andrew Wiggins? Well, I think, in, yeah, I, you know, Nick was in, with in the Warriors. In contrast to yeah. what Kyrie did, Nick right? was with the Warriors at the beginning of last season. Mm -hmm. And when Wiggins got the shot, it changed their team chemistry in a positive way. Kyrie didn't get the shot, and and I know that people fans may be screaming right now, but there's not a man, there's not a mandate next year. That's not going to be an issue. The shot was just the biggest in indicator of what was underlying there, which was a lack of trust and a lack of working together. And when Kyrie goes through this whole season where he kneecapped this team with the vaccine and with other ways he was behaving, and he sits there in the moment after getting swept. And he says, well, yeah, Kevin and I are going to manage this team. <laughs> I mean, imagine if you are the owner of the team, Hannah, right. who's spending all that money, and you hear the guy who's destroyed your season say that. Uh, How can you say, <laughs> see you in the fall? You wonder, you wonder why the Nets would want to reset the power balance, right? And that's what led to, as Brian said, 
this discussion over the past week about what's going to happen with Kyrie's contract. But Kyrie, should they have given them that much power in the first place? Well, that is the billion-dollar question. Yeah, because like, when you're looking at, at blame here, right? right, and when you're looking at, at the very epicenter of where this whole thing started, you know, should and, that have been the – I know that's the way in the no, modern to your, NBA. To your but, point, we're talking a lot about Kyrie Irving. This is a organizational failure. It's a failure for Kevin Durant, it's a failure for Kyrie Irving, and it's a failure for the Nets. And to your point, it's because from the moment Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant came to Brooklyn, it was their team. It wasn't the Nets. It was what are Kyrie and Kevin going to do, right? And right, that, it's a coaching decision, right? right? That, Steve Nash is that the coach. Is, that's right. That All of it came back to empowering those guys to a level we've maybe never seen in the NBA before. And that's why it isn't just a Kyrie Irving failure because look, if you are Kyrie Irving, why wouldn't you think you're running the team based off the way the last three years have gone, based off the way this season has gone? So, yes, it's everyone's fault. And it's not Hannah, just one person. That's exactly why there's very little empathy across the league for the Nets right now. Because when you make your bed and give all that power to superstars and say, hey, this is your team, and you get into that kind of deal with Kyrie Irving, you get what you deserve. And to the point about Andrew Wiggins and the Warriors, this is crucial. He didn't want to get that shot. And he knew that in order to keep